In the early days of motion pictures, innovators often experimented with various types of dimensional stop-motion animation, and they sometimes used modeling clay to make simple, malleable characters that could come to life. In 1932, one such pioneer, an Oregon filmmaker named Lewis Clark Cook, made a clay animated film called The Little Baker. However, 2D cell animation got an early foothold and quickly became the norm for animation. By the 1940s and 50s, 2D drawn animation was the dominant form, with TV shows and theater presentations created by hundreds of small and large cell animation practitioners. Model animation, or three-dimensional animation, was largely denigrated and rarely seen. By the 1960s, clay animation was completely maligned, called impractical and not suited for animation. Toward the end of the 60s, Will Vinton, a native Oregonian from McMinnville, was studying architecture and filmmaking at the University of California at Berkeley. There, he experimented with stop-motion animation, including object animation and pixelation. His interest in organic fluid forms and the architecture of Antoni Gaudí in Barcelona led Will to begin designing with plasticine clay. The filmmaking and the clay sculpting combined for creative experiments in clay animation. It was upon first viewing these experiments that Will Vinton had an epiphany about the potential of clay and 3D animation. He felt this was something that clearly deserved further exploration. In the early 70s, while working full-time as a filmmaker in Portland, Will decided to continue the experiments in clay animation. He wanted to make a film that would show off the merits of this unique but unproven medium and hopefully show others the potential he saw in it. He invited his college housemate and sculptor, Bob Gardner, to join him at his house in Portland to help. They set up a small shooting stage in the basement of Will's home and began animating. I wonder what makes it work. <laughs> An eight-minute clay animated film was completed in 1974 called Closed Mondays. Thank you for turning me on. I am a replica of the Model 505 Type C Electro Brain. The film garnered hundreds of international awards and captured the first ever Academy Award Oscar for a stop-motion film. After making a commercial for Rainier Beer, Will and Bob went their own ways to work on separate projects. Will used the commercial's mountain backdrop for his next film, Mountain Music. Vinton followed this with a more ambitious half-hour film called Martin the Cobbler, based on a Tolstoy short story for non-theatrical distributor Billy Budd Films in New York. For the general public, interest was growing in what seemed like a new animation technique that Will Vinton and his associates were exploring. To help satisfy this interest, the team created a documentary to describe the basics of their process. They called it Claymation. It was a word Will coined and later trademarked to differentiate his work from that of other clay animators that came before. The modest success of these first films created the opportunity to continue making Claymation films for non-theatrical and educational distribution. For Vinton, what followed was an exciting series of experimental short films, each designed to explore the capabilities of claymation and move the medium forward. But when Rip entertained, he always drew a crowd. There are men, special men, born to Where I live, everything is very small. This experimental period was creative and satisfying, 
and Will built a solid team of artists dedicated to the advancement of claymation and 3D animation. Architect turned animator Barry Bruce began a 25-year period working with Will as the backbone of this 3D animation journey. The chain of life had begun. It was a process of trial and error. Some were swift and some were strong, but one of them was clever. On a Christmas evening, while all the doors shut it tight. And quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods, and split the air with their wings. Indeed, these claymation films showed off an impressive range of 3D animation techniques and styles. And God said, that's good. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard. <laughs> Actually, they weren't lizards at all. They were reptiles. What happened to them, Philip? They died. <sighs> Significantly, Vinton was also experimenting and learning all about more sophisticated adult comedy and breathing life into characters in a way that had rarely been done in 3D animation up to that point. The largest of the giant dinosaurs was a plant eater. <laughs> Roosevelt, you know, day of infamy. This generation of Americans has a rendezvous with... Frankie. He had a mistress, you know. <laughs> and then there were the movies. Training, training, training. The two brothers, are, you know, they're fighting. You know, they're always fighting. I'll break your face. Take this. Why, you run. I'll take that. Man. Take that. Well, they're getting in shape for the war. You know, they feel good about that. They feel good about that. Well, then they, then they go to the bar and drink on Furler, right? And they fight the Air Force. They fight the Navy and everything. Your mother. Of course, there's no Coast Guard. Oh, and then, of course, you know, back home, there was the Andrews sisters singing uh, Bugle Boy of Company C. The films won hundreds of international awards including four Academy Award nominations in a seven-year period. This is the Noid. Along the way, Vinton's 3D animation and claymation work was attractive to commercial art directors, eager for a new eye-popping look for their advertisers. Pizza that just wasn't right, the Noid did it. So come check and save. Initially, the production of claymation commercials was sandwiched between longer productions as time allowed. But when producer David Alchel came on to oversee commercial projects, the team's capacity for producing commercials grew. The studio could then have multiple projects in production at the same time. You know what upsets me? Spicy food. How oh, upsetting! Hot peppers! To extend the audience for Vinton's popular claymation shorts, they were packaged as a feature for theaters, as the Festival of Claymation, with dinosaur hosts Herb and Rex. Hey, I wouldn't give these guys a job. They're perhaps a bit dated. But nice visual. A stylistic mishmash. Which is why I liked it. And I hated it. The interest and success of this feature-length compilation encouraged Vinton to explore making a popular feature film in claymation. A fan of Mark Twain, executive producer Hugh Tyrell, convinced Vinton to consider making a movie based on the famous American author's works. Saturday. A story concept emerged that tied together various well-known stories by Mark Twain. They began production of the diary of Adam and Eve. By the time the diary was completed, a unique adventure story had evolved with Twain characters and stories combined and interwoven. And the Vinton team began production on the world's first claymation feature film, The Adventures of Mark Twain. I've seen all the foreign countries I care to see, except for heaven and hell, and I have only a vague curiosity as concerns one of those. <laughs> no, friends, I go to meet the comic. Oh, no! My God! That be a mortal soul out of her. Hello. 
What's your name? Satan. Uh-oh. <laughs> you, Ricky! <laughs> the Adventures of Mark Twain was a highlight of the team's artistic growth and the pinnacle of their experimentation. It was also an important milestone in the growth of 3D animation. You look about as disappointed as Presbyterians in hell. What was that? <laughs> well, quick, where are you from? The film received great praise from the critics, including Michael Medved, who called Mark Twain the most original and audacious animated film since Fantasia. Superfluous. Claymation had never before been used in quite the same way, and the film drew considerable attention to the art form. Yeah. Against the assault of laughter, <laughs> nothing can stand. The appeal of the film for adults, as well as for children, was unusual, and contributed to the growth of adult appreciation for animated features. Upon completing Mark Twain, Will Vinton and his team were fully capable of creating popular 3D characters and bringing them to life in a variety of media. Of their many commercial campaigns, none was more popular than the cool California Raisins dancing to I Heard It Through the Grapevine. Interest also grew in having Vinton apply the 3D magic to music videos, including several projects with rock legend Michael Jackson. The sophisticated 3D animation medium also settled naturally into prime time television with a number of Emmy award-winning specials and programs, including Will Vinton's Claymation Christmas Celebration, and Meet the Raisins. like a rabbi trapped in a pig's body. No, a rabbit. A rabbit in a pig's body. Look, I've been living a lie. The growing popularity of Claymation by Will Vinton Studios, as well as by imitators and new competitors, generated greater interest in 3D films for all audiences. And to whom do I have the pleasure? A famine. A famine of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Of course, you don't have to worry, because I'm on sabbatical, okay? <laughs> the term claymation was beginning to be used commonly by people in the know all over the world. At the same time, computer animation tools were becoming more accessible to artists, and they offered new opportunities to 3D animators. I smell the smell. Liar, you only smelled yourself. Vinton explored the computer tools to great effect taking what he had learned about bringing 3D characters to life in claymation and applying it to computer animation. Notable was the team's CG work on such characters as the M&Ms, where knowledge gained from Mark Twain and claymation characters added enormously to dimensionalize the personalities of the M&Ms. What are you doing? What? You're eating M&Ms. Yeah, so are you. Well, I'm not an M&M. &M. You don't eat your own kind, it's unnatural. Blending the techniques allowed for other innovations and styles.
By the end of the 1990s, as 3D animation and entertainment was becoming widely accepted by all ages, particularly adults, Fenton's team mounted several large primetime television projects, including 52 episodes of The PJs with Eddie Murphy. Interest in the show helped spawn another claymation-inspired TV series, Gary and Mike, in 2001. I can't wait to see the look on Ben's face. He's gonna freak! When was the last time you saw him? I'll kill you! No, I'll kill you! Bring it on! Christmas, two years ago. At the beginning of the 21st century, images of popular dimensional characters completely dominated the airwaves and the movie theaters for the first time. The growth and evolution of 3D imagery, perfected and highlighted in The Adventures of Mark Twain by Will Vinton and his associates, contributed substantially towards ushering in a wave of 3D animation that is with us to stay. I'm impressed.